One of the catalysts for change was Evelyn Kennedy of Bridgeport, Connecticut. In 1947, Evelyn and her husband John took their young son Brian to a pediatric specialist in New Haven. There I got words that will forever ring in my ears. Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy, you have a mentally retarded child. And he was born retarded and he'll die retarded. There's no miracle cure, there's no miracle anything. That, uh, so you have got to make plans, you know, for his future and their advice to us then was words that are imprinted up here. Put them away and forget you ever had them. I remember John and I looked to one another. Put them away. No. Forget we ever had them. Oh God, no. And without saying a word between us, we knew that Brian was to be with us for the rest of his life. Whether she realized it or not at the time, Evelyn Kennedy's commitment to raising her child set her on a path that would benefit all of the children with intellectual disabilities in her community. Her mission began when she decided to seek help at a town meeting. I just stood up when the time came and said I am the mother of a mentally retarded child. It was a dead silence. People looked at me in the head, so I had two heads. But uh, when I stopped talking and I told them, all we want to do is keep him home. Keep him home and love him. Help us. Will you give us what we need to do this? Evelyn's emotional plea reached beyond her neighbors to local schools and businesses who offered meeting rooms and assistance. But the most valuable contribution came from other parents like the Kennedys, who met for the first time to discuss the issues facing their families. One snowy February night, 1951, a group of 12 parents got together at our home. The remarkable thing was this. We weren't together five minutes, complete strangers. And we had a bond between us that nothing in this whole world was going to break. We were going to get for our kids what was their natural birthright. In Bridgeport, the living room meetings led to the development of a small educational resource center, which gave these children their first social experiences. They had company. They had company, they had somebody that, that could play with them. They had other parents that would take over for me if I wanted to go downtown to get my hair done or something, that would babysit for Ryan. It was give and take. It was the picnics, the little things, that, but they never had them. <laughs> 